Hello and welcome to the Sunday interview. My guest today is a seasoned politician and a public servant of high repute. He is a ranking lawmaker in a state house of assembly which prides itself above every common standard. You will be meeting my guest after this time out. I am Aziza Tolalua. I will be right back. Welcome back. With me today is a ranking member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, representing Lagos Mainland Constituency 2. He is also the Chairman, House Committee on Public Account State. I am talking about Honorable Mashud Olanri Waju Oshun. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you. All right, for someone spending the third term in the House of Assembly, you look quite young. How old are you? Well, I'm close to 50, I'm 49. So what year were you born, to be exact? I was born on the 18th of May, 1969. So you're not so young after all. <laughs> all right. Still um, young too, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, tell us about your educational background, from primary school uh, stage to where you behind. Well, um, like I said, I was born in Abdulajesha on the 18th of May, 1969. And that's in Lagos, Milan, Constituency too. For my primary education, I went to Seven Days Adventist Primary School in Abuja, and from there I proceeded to St. Finbar's College, Akoka, mm -hmm. for my secondary education. After that, I went to Sony Luba for A levels, which um, after that I went to Ogun State College of Education for my NC. After the NC, I was a teacher for some time. I worked with a company, and then I went to University of London. I went to Westminster University in London, in Regent Street. Mm -hmm. where I did my first degree. Um, I had first degree in politics and sociology combined horns. You actually studied politics? And sociology. Oh, okay. So it's a combination of politics and sociology, so which is you. the study of human mm -hmm. yeah. And And um, after that time, I came back to Lagos. I went to the University of Lagos for my master's, master's in public and international affairs. After the first master's, I started the second one. Really? Yes. Wow. MS in politics again. As I'm talking to you, I'm running a course in Unilag, like another master's program. The third one? Yes. Wow. MSc sociology. Wow. Okay. <laughs> How was growing up like for you? Well, that's a wonderful question. It was fun. Like I said, I grew up in Abolition and um, I tried to compare what we have now and what we had then. <sighs> There's no comparison. Why do you there. say so? Because then there was this communal living. Everybody is your parents, everybody is your mom, everybody is your dad. So you know you dare not go out of line. It's not, you don't have to wait for your mom or your dad to caution you. Every elder, every adult in that community is your mom and your dad. Mm -hmm. And it was from, I am the last in my family. And, and um, my dad, May the soul rest in peace was a wonderful person. Okay. He made sure that all his kids, one, must go to school, must at any point in time appear in it, and at any point in time must look at your integrity, look at your upbringing. For him, it's a whole package. Okay. He wants a situation whereby even when he's not there, people will look at you and say, okay, that's a well-trained boy or a well-trained girl. So for him, you must be good. And apart from that, you must be religious, you must go to the mosque, so... But for me, it was wonderful. Mm. Were you an adventurous child growing up, or mischievous? Ah, adventurous, <laughs> yes. I like... I like taking some risk. Mm. But I tried to take calculated risk. I was not brought up to just plunge into anything. But it's something, if I do anything, I want to say, if anybody asks me, did you do this? I should be able to say, yes, I did it. Mm. And that means it must be good. Okay. So what childhood memory do you still remember so vividly? 
so many, so many. So which one stands out? Well, it's, like I said, so many, but I'll give you one negative and one positive one. Okay. I'll start with the negative one. There was a time my father was out of town. He actually went to went out of Lagos for a function, and it was a Friday. I went out with my friends to play football. Usually, we go to either Unilag or St. Famous College to play football. So I went to play football. So when I was coming back around 6.30 to 7, the assumption was my father was out of town, and he won't be back till Sunday. <laughs> and on getting home, I saw him on the back of me. Wow. Was he holding the cane? <laughs> no. He was there waiting for me to come back. But as a child, I was scared. And instead of just going in to tell him, look, I went to play football, mm -hmm. I was scared to come home. So I was looking at him from afar, and from 6.30 to 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 9.30, not minding the fact that that is even making it worse. worse. Mm. I was like, what do I tell this man? So I waited there till about 9.30, and eventually, I summoned up courage to say, okay, let me go in. And he said, you left up since morning, you come back at 9.30. I said, no, sir, I came back at 6.30. But how do I explain <laughs> that I've been, I've been in the corner, mm. looking at him on the balcony, but I, there, there was no courage for me to come in. So that was a negative one. Uh, you know what will end up. <laughs> I got my normal spanking. And, but for positive ones, there's so many. So many. Um, when I come back with my results, and my father look at the results, oh, you've done wonderfully well this time, you deserve a treat. So many, so many. Mm. Growing up then was fun, and there was that LD rivalry, LD competition among the kids. I want to come first, you want to come mm. first. So we go to school with that, I'm going to beat you in the next result. And that was how we grew up, not what we have now, where kids want to con con contest with who can take more alcohol or take more tramadol. How things have changed really over the years. It what does. are your hobbies? Hobbies. I love football. Really? What club football. are you supporting? I support Manchester United. Mm. And um, I play football myself. So you do? Yes. You still do? I still do, yeah. Really? I still play twice a week. Mm. I play on Tuesdays and I play on Thursdays. So now I, I know I, why you're still looking quite young. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what other I play football. I play do? table tennis. Mm -hmm. I love traveling. I enjoy traveling. I want to know what's happening in the other what's happening in that world, what's happening in other countries. Mm. For me, traveling is education, so I enjoy traveling. I enjoy reading. Okay. And um, I love spending time with my family. So where is your favorite holiday destination since you love traveling so much? There is no favorite. For me, every new place I want to go to is a challenge. Mm. What can I learn? So for me, it's not about going to Europe or anywhere. It could be Africa. It could, okay. Even in Nigeria. If you tell me oh, there is one thing in Ogun State, there's something in your State, there's something in Oshun State. I want to go there, even if it's just for the weekend. I want to go there and see what is really happening there. Okay. Now, let's talk about your wife you mentioned earlier. Um, how did you woo her? How did you make her fall in love? And how did you get married? <laughs> um, there is a friend, there was this friend of mine, we went to college vacation together. Uh, the wife had a baby and I went for the christening. On getting the the first person I met, I did was my wife. Mm. Then another guest. And I said to myself, this is a pretty woman. But I wasn't really sure if I wanted to talk to her. But after sitting down for about 10, 15 minutes, and I realized the way she was interacting with people, her humbleness, the way she was assisting, I was like, okay. This seems like to be like someone who was well trained. This is a nice woman. And when I was leaving, the host, who happens to be a friend of mine, Stanley, now was like, oh, um, I wanted to meet. And I said to him, I said, look, why this lady out of everybody here? <laughs> and he said, I just felt I should introduce her to you. Mm. So I asked her for her number, and she said no, but she doesn't give her numbers to strangers. Okay, no problem. So I spoke to Stanley to give me a number. Stanley said no. I spoke to Stanley's wife, who happens to be a very good friend of mine too. And she said, okay, I'll give you a number. Well, the first time I called, I was like, yes, who asked you to call me? Who gave you my number? <laughs> but the rest is history today. Tell us about your children. Uh, how many are they? Where are they now? I've got three lovely boys and um, wonderful kids. I can't tell you I'm blessed because um, I had them in London. And normally, when you talk of London boys, there's that fear. 
there is that belief that they are not well brought up. There is that belief that they won't listen to their parents. But I've been blessed. They've been wonderful. They finished their studies. The first one is in university, mm -hmm. studying law. Yeah. Yeah, no in London. In London, okay. The second one is when his A levels. I thank God for for them. Were you in the delivery room with your wife? I was there for the three times. Okay. Now, what is your favorite meal? To be honest with you, I'm not really a food person. I love picking foods, but I love to do uh, fried egg, fried um, plantain and egg. I love beans. I take a lot mm -hmm. of beans. And um, I, maybe because of age or something, I mean, because I want to watch my weight and everything, I try to only from carbohydrates these days. Okay. But I used to love Amala and the Foriro. So, do you drink alcohol? No, I've been blessed. Not at all? Not at all. Have you ever tasted it? Well, I've, I've had a few shots of brandy. I've never taken, I, all my life, I've never taken beer. Mm. Not beer, never. Are you in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. I've never taken beer. I've never smoked. Oh. I've never smoked. But was I've... it about your self consciousness, about you know something you decided on your own, or out of your own volition, or you were not, you were never pressurized by friends? Well, there is this theory that um, peer groups pay pressure. For me, I think if you're strong enough, you can't be pressured into doing anything unless you want to do it yourself. Mm. All so. right. So, do you listen to music? I love music. If so, what genre? Well, I'm a Yoruba man, so I love my Sony, I love my OB, I love King Waswendi, was Masha, I love Pasuma. And I listen to, I love gospel music, so I listen to Tokwe Alabi, I listen to Inka Ifele. Mm. So, uh, I love my Yoruba music. Wow, though you're a Muslim, you still listen to Tokwe Alabi and Inka Ifele? Yes. It, well, if you go into my car, all the CDs of in Kaifele you find in my car, in all my cars. Some of, 80% um, of Top Alabi you find in my cars. Really? So if I asked you to sing for me right now, what song Don't would come there. to mind? Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not blessed with a very good voice. Let me be the, the judge of that. <laughs> if you just sing a, a chorus of any of your favorite songs, let's, you know, let me be the judge. <laughs> That's a tight one. <laughs> no, I mean, That's a tight one. Song, anyone, anything that comes to mind. Nothing comes to mind, really, um, to be honest with you. If you play Top Gun Abit now, or if you play Inka Ifele, or if you play Barista, I will start from the beginning till the end. But you but can't remember ask, any, right? Don't ask me are to. You, are you sure? Or you just don't want to sing? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's move on now. Uh, before we go on a break, quickly tell me what inspired you into going into politics. I already know you studied politics, you know, O level, even with your masters as well. But what really inspired you to venture into politics in Nigeria? Firstly, I can tell you, it's an inborn thing. Okay. Inborn in the sense that uh, my father was a politician, okay. and um, when I was very young, when they were hove, they were host when he was hosting meetings, political meetings, I usually sit beside him. Oh. Just to know, I'll, because I'll be the one to arrange the hall where the meetings will be, where they're building the meeting. After that, I'll be beside them all through the meeting. Even when their meeting goes as late as 10, 11 at night, I'll be beside them. That's number one. Number two, I moved away and I was leaving my brother, who happens to be a politician. Fact, I was about to ask you that if he had any influence on you. Okay. Well, he sure did. He sure did it because. I can tell you for free, Nigerian politics today is one of the few politicians you have that that still have integrity. He's a man in tough, you know, of integrity. He's a man that believes you need to think about other people. So when I was living with him, I realized that we can't all run away from politics. Some people need to serve because he was a federal civil servant. He was working with the federal ministry of Agri. He left, started his own company. But even at that, he brought out his own money. Mm. to contest in 1987 to be the chairman of Lagos Milan. When Lagos Milan was just one, then we had about 12 local governments. And Lagos Milan was as far as Suru Liri Apapa. That was how big Lagos Milan was then. But he was not in office, but he still came out with his money, with his, money, with his belief to contest. And he did a very good election. And I was living with him then. So partially, he, he has that influence on me. Positively. And um, 
The first time I traveled out of the country, there was a bad experience at the airport. As soon as we landed in Amsterdam, the immigration officer, as soon as he saw the Nigerian green passport, the countenance changed. Mm. And I just couldn't fathom, I, do, I couldn't explain why. But when I was talking to some people, I realized, I, when, I, when I was talking to people that have been traveling, they said, ah, Nigeria do today, one more people are today. And I was like, should it be that way? Shouldn't. And I felt that we need to do more. Those were the things. And from that day, I said, look, listen, I'm going to serve my people. And since then, you have not looked back. All right, we'll talk more about your political exploits after this short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. My guest on the show today has been Honorable Moshud Olari Waju Oshun. Welcome back. I have been speaking with Honorable Moshud Onlari Waju Oshun, a ranking member of the Lagos State House of Assembly. Thank you for staying with me oh, on the show. You. Thank you. Now, the people of Lagos mainland too must truly trust you to keep sending you back to the Lagos State House of Assembly. Why you? Are you the only person that can really represent them? I want to look at it from two angles. Okay. The first angle is the fact that I thank Almighty Allah for sparing my life and for making it worthy for me to get to that position okay. because either we like it or not whatever you're going to become in life is something that has been ordained by almighty god so that's the first one but the second one <clears throat> the people of Lagos mainland realize and know i am one of them like i said i was born in abdiyesha and all my life apart from when i was out of the country or oh, maybe i've always been one of them i go there every day i have to constant services when I moved from Abrijesha, I went to, I was living in um, one Macolum Street, which is still in the Lived there, came back to Mam, came back to Moleye in Alagumiji. So I am part and parcel of Lagos Mainland. Mm -hmm. And when I say I'm part and parcel of Lagos Mainland, I feel their pains, I feel their joy, I know their problem, because I'm part of that place. I, I know the Lagos Mainland like the back of my hand. So what have you been able to do with the mandate given to you since 2007? Well, what I've been able to do is to make sure that I represent them to the best of my ability. Okay. Um, this is my third time in the house. And in those years, a lot has been achieved. I have to be thankful to Almighty Allah. And I can divide that into three. The first one, is this something I've done myself? Is it bills or motions I've sponsored in the house? Is it the influence of governments that have brought back into Lagos mainland? So we can look at it from three angles. If I want to start with myself, personally, I've renovated schools. Personally, I've given balls. Personally, I've brought transformers. I've been able to bring government presence into Lagos Mainland. I've brought government to come and do roads for us, to come and do schools, to come and improve our health facility in Avi. Avi Center has been improved. I've been able to bring the go. As I'm talking to you today, we are doing something. Lagos Mainland 2 is going to be the hub of computer of IT in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. It's something going on now okay. um, in Sabo. By the time that is finished, we are bringing the whole of IT in Lagos State to the hub, to that area. That just didn't happen. Like I said, if you look at Mulitar Mamed Way, it was done. If you look at Commercial Avenue, it was done by the government. Apart from that, I've been able to influence public works to come and do some palliative measures for us. That has been done. I've been able to influence about 10 transformers into Lagos mainland in different locations. I personally have renovated Seventh day Adventist Primary School, which was my primary school. Mm -hmm. I've done that twice. I personally have sunk over 30 boreholes in Lagos mainland with my money. I personally uh, I have a scholarship program I'm running. I have a widow's program I'm running. I have some widows I give money to. Well, peanuts, but they I give money to on a monthly basis. And that I've studied over 10 years, which I'm still doing. Mm. And so really, that's from my own part. The money might be peanuts, because when I started the widow's program, it was something I learned when I was living abroad. Well, these are widows, these are old people. They need all the assistance they can get. So I, I just pick few from each world and I give them money every month. Now, let's talk about your position as the 
Chairman House Committee on Public Account State. What are your roles and what have you been able to achieve with that position? Well, um, firstly, um, I'm the Chairman House Committee on Public Account State, but I have other committee members. But apart from that, any Chairman of the House is only for, for Mr. Speaker. So whatever you might have achieved is still based on the integrity of the House. Because we'll be a very stupid person to rubbish a name that has been built. Lagos House of Assembly is the best in Nigeria today. So it's not about you. It's not about any individual. It's about that institution. Mm. That's number one. Number two, as the Chairman has committed on public accounts, what are, what are you expected to do? The Auditor General of the state, in the course of the year, will audit all the MDAs in Lagos State and will come up with his own report, with his findings. Is that findings as a committee that I'm expected to work on? with my other committee members. So normally what we do is look at the general's reports, but what I have done in my own case is, apart from the general's report, usually I'll go back to the other and we get consultants to go out and give us more information on the reports. So by the time you're coming to us, um, by the time you're invited to come and defend what has been written by the general, you are defending two reports. One, the report from the general, two, the reports of the personal private consultant the house has employed so and so far so good uh, just recently the speaker of the illegal state house of assembly uh, got elected as the chairman of speakers forum uh, were you surprised that he... not really i was expecting that and i was even surprised they allowed that to happen after i studied in office mm. even when he was not the speaker even when he was not the chairman i know as a matter of fact that he has been guiding and leading even among the speakers I was in his office one day when some speakers came to visit him. And after 20 minutes, and after he was able to explain some things to the speakers, they left the office with, the, ah, we know no sooner, so you. Ah, no, we are going back to our seat to go and collect it. We thought. So the impression they came with, after sitting down with him for about 20 minutes, he was able to change it. That's the kind of person he is. Mm. There's that leadership role. So when he was elected for me, well, I congratulated him, but I wasn't surprised. Okay. If you were not uh, practicing politics, what profession would you have dabbled into? When I was very young, the only thing I wanted to do in my life was be a lawyer. Oh. And I can tell you for free, I'm still looking into that. Really? Um, it's something I'm looking into. I might, after the next election, be applying to study law. Mm -hmm. It's just something I love. I'm not saying I want to go and practice as a lawyer, but it was something I would love to. I would love to wear that gown. I would love to wear that wig. I would love to be called a lawyer. Okay. Uh, do you have a role model? Oh, uh, I don't know how to phrase this. Role model, role model. I have people. Oh, people I try. Someone you look up to. I don't look up to anybody. Okay. Like I said, my brother was a guiding person for me. Mm -hmm. I look at him, I try to learn from him. In politics today, I look at someone like Ashwadi Balamed Tudumbu and try to learn from him because he's a selfless giver. Mm -hmm. You see, there's some things, for me, when you say role model, that means everything that person is doing. There's no perfect person. So if I say you're my role model, I must copy everything you're doing. But everybody I've seen around, I realize that he has some good traits, some bad traits. So what I try to do with everybody I deal with is take something good from you. Like I said, I tried to like to a selfless giver, a good leader, someone that will tell you the way it is and stand by it. No matter what, even when he's wrong, he'll tell you, okay, I'm sorry. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. for me, it's something I would learn from him. Like I said, my brother is someone that would deny himself to make sure that he does the right thing. So really, for me, I pick, so I try to pick something from, even from my kids, okay. even from my kids. And that's why I keep saying to people, don't think, forget about your age. What is important is you can learn from anybody. All right, any lowest moment? Well, lowest moment. <laughs> I have few, but the latest I can remember was when my mom died. Mm. My mom died about five years ago, and when she when she passed on, we were all right. We were with her. Mm. Um, myself and my siblings were with her. She went into the room to rest, and um, she passed. She actually passed on in her hands, mm. and um, and that was a wonderful one. So I think that's the latest for me. 
May she rest in peace. Amen. Tell us about uh, your happiest uh, moment. To be honest with you, I think I'll pick out the day I had my first child. Wow. But I realized that each time I walk into that labor room and I come out with a boy, <laughs> I'm really happy. And the last child, I said to myself, I'm not going to do this again. But the birth of those boys were happy moments for me. Mm. All right, finally now. 2019 is fast approaching. What is your plan? Well, um, I've been, like you said, I've been in the house for three times. Mm -hmm. This is my third time in the house. I want to come back to the house for the fourth time oh. for two reasons. One, the people in my constituents want me back. Although I have a very small number that feels that, why should they be him again? You know, you have to have people who are not objective enough to say that, to tell me that, um, You've been there for many years. Let somebody else go there. I say with the competition. For me, legislative duty is not a joke. And all over the world, go to UK, go to US. You see a legislator who's been in, who's been in that job for 30 years, 25 years. Because the more you go back into the house, the more experience you have, the more you can bring something back to your constituency. Everybody keeps talking about not too young to run, but it's not about the certificate you carry. In legislative house, it's about your experience. It's about what you know. It's about what you learn. So no matter what, and that's why the right of the book speaker, this is four time in the house. But you go into his office anytime you see him reading. If you want to be anything as a legislator, you must continue to read. You must continue to explore. You must continue to talk to your people. So 2019, inshallah, I want to go back to the house to represent my people. They've given me their notes. They've given me their mandates. Um, the problem is around the corner, and I hope that the nod they've given to me, they'll come out to implement when we have the primaries. All right, well, in the nearest future, are you looking at uh, aiming higher, maybe to the House of Reps? Or Definitely, um, but I'll leave that to Almighty Allah, and I'll leave that to the people of my constituency, and I'll leave that to my family, because in all these things too, you need your family support, you need the approval. You know, as a politician, either you like it or not, your family suffers somehow. Okay. Because you don't have time for them, you are in one meeting or the other, you come back very late. So it affects them too. So for every position I want to go into, for everything, I sit down with my wife and say, look, do is to go ahead. Because I need that approval. All right, thank you very much, Honorable, for featuring on our show today. Thank you very much. And that's how it's been on the show for this week. For inquiries, send all of them to the Sunday interview at tvcnews.tv. Until I come away next week, I remain Azizat Olaluwa. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.